Welcome aboard, it's Captain G with Operation First Blood 14.1 Far East Command. So we're past extra innings now. We have reached turn 14, sudden death. So for those who have not had a chance yet to peruse the rules available on the HBG website, starting on turn 12, we were rolling a variable game ending with um, fallout, the accumulation of the mushroom clouds that you see all over the map, how much nukes uh, were used in the game. Starting on turn 14, you continue to do that, but if the game doesn't end because of fallout, you roll a d12 and the game ends at six or less. So now it's, a, what, uh, 20 is, you get a 21 out of 100, so a 21% chance that it'll end with fallout. And if it doesn't, there's still a 50% chance it'll end just on a D6, a D12. Well, of a six or less. So um, most likely we are, as I said, in sudden death. We could end it any minute. Uh, the only bit of housekeeping was against my pack friend and neighbor who failed to retake Singapore, but clearly when he was adding up his money and counting his capitalist treasures, he forgot that there's a minus two uh, to his economy. So uh, with Singapore, it's a penalty. So earlier in the game, he had minus two for Tokyo, minus two for Singapore, and minus two for each of these lovely oil tankers. Um, so he forgot this one and he only counted Tokyo. So. He has taken away two IPP from his cash on hand. And with that, we're ready to jump in. So as predicted, the Soviet soothsayers in Pravda were correct. The army base survived <laughs> miraculously and has eight damage. So under repair, I will pay to repair that facility. The Philippine people chose to go communist. I'm trying to honor their wishes, it's the American imperialists and their nuclear arsenal that are trying to overturn that. Tech. So let me uh, move you up a little bit, but I still want you to see not only the die roll, but some of the battle dice. So five tech. We are making one change. Instead of rolling for tech four advanced SLBMs, we're rolling for tech one precision guided munitions. So two dice on PGMs, one on Advanced Air Superiority Fighter, one on Advanced Sonar, and one on um, whatever that is, Advanced Manufacturing, the, the capitalist one. All right, here we go. So a three is a fail, a six is a fail, a five is a fail. 10 and the 12 both succeed, so the Soviets achieve stage one of precision guided munitions. And if we go to stage 17, I may have a chance, or turn 17, I may have a chance to complete that technology that the Americans have. All right, so that's tech strategic nuclear options. So the Soviets and their uh, Minister of Defense, we're looking hard at nuking Taiwan. And besides the fact that we cannot do that because it's a neutral country that we are not at war with, um, and there are rules in the, in the Global War 85 book about um, how you go to war with neutrals. Um, we also thought about the environmental conditions of the planet, the fallout, and so we've decided to skip the strategic nuclear phase. Uh, the Soviets are unilaterally denuking uh, this war and um, hopefully our American and Chinese comrades will, will, uh, will follow our lead towards prosperity and rainbows and a nuclear free future for our children and grandchildren. So with that, uh, we'll go direct to combat. So down here at the bottom with the number two, 
We are sending, and I, I loved the way that uh, Flak88 did his dice with the, with the strategic arcs, except for where they ended. Um, but I thought that was kind of cool. So because some of these movements are at the extreme end of movement and, and or involve only one path to get there, I mapped that out. So the backfire bomber leaving its base in Tokyo will fly one, two, three, four, five to the launch point in the Nava computer. I'm sorry, six to the launch point in the Nava computer. Fire two conventional anti-ship missiles. So two dice, not six, uh, to try to sink this American amphibious assault ship. There is no missile defense for the Americans here. That's attack two. Attack three is a cruise missile fired from the major air base in Vladivostok at the minor army base in South Manchuria. Attack four out here in Western Xinjiang. We're launching cruise missiles. Let me see what you can see, yep. Cruise missiles from the air base in Uzbekistan as well as coming down from Novosibirsk. We're sending a fighter, one, two, on seed, suppression of enemy air defense. So that'll prohibit this um, SAM battery from firing first strike. Although China did have a decision to make with only one SAM. Did they want to commit it to AMD and not shoot at the aircraft or uh, take its chances and shoot at the aircraft knowing that the, US, or the Soviets were attacking with seed? Um, the Chinese chose the aircraft because that would allow them to get a shot at these attack bombers. He, he really gains nothing from the cruise missiles. He's not worried about the territory, the, the SAM, or the infantry. He's after these bombers, which strategically makes sense, and, and I, I agree with him, although hopefully it doesn't work out for him. So these two attack bombers are coming down, as well as following the yellow brick path. Um, this air superiority fighter from this air base in southern Kazakhstan with a movement of six plus one. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll land the major air base down here in uh, Uzbekistan. His purpose is to deter this fighter from scrambling and shooting at bombers while, uh, while the fighter was doing seed, which commits the fighter to regular combat, not air to air. Um, and the Chinese chose not to scramble the fighter. Okay, so that was combat. Oh, and the ground force is coming in. Sorry, these guys have a role to play. The MBT and the mech from Novo are coming in. They thought they were a reinforcement convoy for the forces there, but by the time they get there, they found a billion screaming Chinese coming at them. There's only one way to get that number down to 600,000, and we just swore off nukes, so we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. There is the, um, I'm using the partisan markers to be the people's war marker, so plus one uh, for those units in the first round of defense. All right, so that's combat number four. Number five, back, I'm going around the camera again. So this summary task force, which keeps running around the Pacific, chasing these American boomers uh, that continue to evade me. Um, the Commodore has decided to send the force one, two, three into P-17 and go sub to sub against that Chinese um, nuclear attack sub. Now I didn't confirm China's fight or flight but I'm hoping to make that a moot choice by uh, sending a torpedo into his baffles. And he'll have no choice but to fire off a snapshot. And then he can run as deep as he wants all the way down to the bottom. All right. And then the last one, number six, this attack bomber starting out on the same path as the backfire one, two, and then turning three, four to reach the launch point in their nav computer can fire one anti-ship missile conventional i'm not firing a nuclear one um, and i'm going to try to pick off one of those uh, oil tankers all right let's see if this was a good strategy or if it was a mistake 
All right, let's go to battle one, or battle two rather, which is two anti-ship missiles. There is no defense. So I get two dice and they hit at a five or less. Okay, nine and a three. So that was success. So I'll put the two cruise missiles and the American amphibious ship aside, and then I'll move him on non-combat. So, so far one for one. Number three is the cruise missile strike here, facility strike against that minor army base. So it's been a while since, well, China, we've always done conventional. So the defense is one D12 hitting at four or less. And this is a D2 with chemical. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure where I put the chemical markers, but chemical for the facility strike, which adds one to the damage. Oh, all right. So the defense was an 11, so that's a miss. The four puts that at two points damage plus one with the chem. So that's three points damage on the Chinese minor army base. Just so happened to have one of those readily available. Outstanding. That's number three resolved. All right, let's move on to number four. Number four is the big battle, well, big, relatively speaking to the turn. So since we're done in the south, let me pivot you. Well, I bring you closer to the map and you can't see the rolls. How about that? All right. Bring this up here so you can see what's going on. So, first off, I have two cruise, cruise missiles hitting at a five or less. Now, this is first strike to hopefully um, take out some Chinese defenders. Three and a seven. That's only one hit. When I look at the order of casualties from China, it was the Sam. So, that was killed first strike. So now when we go into regular combat, I have, let's set this up. We'll do uh, the fighter at six. We'll do the attack bombers at seven. The ASF has to retire. There are no air to air targets. The MBT, I'll go ahead and use this four as a four, and I'll use the mech as a three, okay? Let me get rid of these so I don't cause confusion with the die rolls. All right, so first up, I'm going to roll the MBT and the mech, a three and a four. I got a five and a ten, that's two misses. I'm going to roll the... Fighter at a six. Well, that's a nine, but you know what I mean. It's a six. All right. So a six and two sevens with the fighters. Oh. So a one hit. So first round, this was an eight and a 12, I think. So those are both misses. So only one hit by the land forces against the three Chinese defenders. So the three Chinese defenders will be the red dice. And the first round, uh, they will defend at a five or less. Five or less the first round. <laughs> they got two hits. A 12, I'm sorry, a 12, which is a mess, and a one and a two. So obviously I'm going to take the mech and the MBT and that prematurely ends the battle. There weren't supposed to be any surviving infantry there. I'm not going to uh, send fighters against waves of infantry. I need somebody on the ground. So that's it. The um, 
air will disengage. The battle is over. All right. Um, if I had won, I was going to land these back up in Novo. Because I'm retreating, I don't know what the rules are for air. He has to go here. He cannot retreat back there because they did. He doesn't have the fuel for that. So if it matters, and it might, I don't know. Um, and I know I'm doing this out of turn, but I am going to land everything in Uzbekistan if it matters. And I'll go back and check this after. I won't make you wait while I look it up. If it doesn't, then I'm going to land them here. The fighter and the two attack bombers. Um, but since I did, I think I can go here, but I'll check. Okay. So that is a very unsuccessful attack four. So let's hope for better odds in number five. So number five over there, we have the diesel electric, which I'll use a white dice at three and the nuclear attack boats, which I have one, two, three, four Victor threes, and they are at fours. So four Victor threes and one Foxtrot. See if I can get him. Otherwise I'll assume he's gonna run. If China would rather have fought, uh, I will let either uh, Flak 88 or Knights Templar finish the battle. All right, nine, nine, six, seven, eleven. So it's been a while since they acted like subs, and they all missed. <laughs> Not good. All right, so I'm assuming that the Chinese will run silent, run deep, and live to run away another day. So that's disappointing. All right, the final one is the attack bomber. Let's hope for something better. And they are firing the um, one anti-ship missile with no missile defense at the at one of the two oil tankers. So I'm only going to hit at a five or less. Let's hope for better results. Five. <laughs> All right, so that takes one of them off and replaces them with this blub, blub, blub. And that's minus two for my pack compatriot. Mixed results and varying degrees of success and failure, of varying degrees of uh, ineffective attacks. All right, so now in combat. So let me land, let me pivot you slightly just so you can see. Following the path, the using six fuel to get to the launch point the backfire bomber will go seven eight nine and then land in the philippines the attack bomber going back four will reverse his path five six seven eight and land back on japan the top gun fighter on um, japan will fly down to Fly down to the Philippines, one, two, three, four, to take up protection around the uh, backfire bomber, because there are American fighters and other things in the in the area, and I don't want them messing with them. Um, Top Gun, backfire bomber, Philippines. I'm going to send from. Japan, one Sam down to Fukuyama, and I'm going to send one light infantry from Tokyo to Fukuyama again because of the lingering threat of the Americans. Who knows what they're up to? Uh, even though he's run silent, run deep. Had he chosen to fight and he sunk the entire fleet, I'm still going to send via sea lift one SAM and one mechanized infantry from Vladivostok. They can go one, 
one, two, three, and come into these ports here. So that'll give me two mechs, two uh, Sams and a mech in Japan. Or they could just go one, two and get here, okay? Either way, they, they were good. Um, also going to airlift a light infantry from Uzbek, from the air base. Send him down to the Philippines. Yes, yeah, send him down to the Philippines. So this task force marker is the Philippines. So, oops, that was not good. So I had a paramilitary, a light infantry and a Marine, and now I've just air dropped or air lifted uh, second light infantry there. And That's all the movement. So place units. So let me bring this back. Um, and I'm wondering now if I skipped this at the beginning of the turn. I hope I did not. I don't remember. I may have. I may have jumped right into my speech about the planet. So um, again, there was eight that we spent on repairing the army base out of my 37 cash on hand. Uh, eight and a light infantry is 11. Two Sams and a mech are 10, so that's 21. And then eight and eight is 16, 21, 16 is 37. That's the cash on hand, uh, MBT and a um, mech. So I'm going to place both Sams in the Philippines. I'm going to place the light infantry in Japan. I'm going to place two mechs and an MBT in Nova Sibirsk. Two mechs and an MBT in Nova Sibirsk. And a mech in Vlad. All right. And I'm going to add three um, cruise missiles. So I had three, used three. Built three, have three. And as far as anti-ship missiles, I did use three that turn. So I will replace that with the two that I have this time. And I'll confirm the, the count. Um, so collect income. All right, did not take any territories. Did lose some since last we spoke. So I have the base at 16 is the base income. All right, so that is 10, 15, 16. I have my glasses back on. Um, bonus, including computers at, let me just recap the, Sorry about this. Let me just, because there's been a lot of changes. So the event bonus is still two for Tokyo, one each for Sephora and Fukumura, one for Japan and three for computers. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight base bonus. And then for the event bonus, I have two for um, Singapore and one for Philippines. So that's three more, I believe. And I'll double check that off camera, but I think that's eight, 11 and 16. So 11 and 16 is 27. Maybe, because I did lose quite a bit in China and uh, down here. All right, so that brings me to global. Rolling for global support. There we go. All right, one dice, a little black dice. Eight. Eight is four IPP. So 27 becomes 31. So if that's correct, uh, no increase in the fallout um, it is now 
Pack's turn, so I'll turn it over to Flack88. May or may not be back again in turn 15, but if not, I've been saying my farewells every, every turn. This one seems more final than the others. This has been a lot of fun. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully I didn't cause any confusion with some of my confusion. This is my first time playing uh, a major power on my own and, and playing anything to do with this side of the game and playing with Knights Templar and Flak88 have been a blast and appreciate all the help from Admiral Seabass and the team. So I'm going to do a recap at the end of where my forces ended up um, for my fellow players and then check on a couple things that I may have messed up during the turn. So if you're just interested in the turn, that's the end of the turn. If you're following along from home, uh, then let's start with Singapore. I have one attack helicopter. In the Philippine Islands, I have one backfire bomber, one top gun air superiority fighter, two surface to air missile batteries, one paramilitary, two light infantry, and one Marine here in the Philippines. All my facilities are, um, yeah, I didn't pay that one off, are fully repaired, undamaged, pristine, new like as much as you can be in a communist society. In Fukumura, the southern end of the Japanese islands, I have a SAM and a light infantry. On Tokyo itself, I have two SAMs, a mech, a light infantry, and an attack bomber. In P-17, with a hidden Chinese attack, uh, nuclear attack submarine, I have four Victor III attack submarines, nuclear attack submarines, and one Foxtrot diesel electric. In Vladivostok, I have one fighter, one surface-to-air missile battery, and can you see that? No. So let me move it down. This is the task force in Vladivostok. Yes. One airborne, one next-gen MBT, two MBTs, and one, two, three, four, five mechs, which is, I think, net what I had before. I just built one and sent one to Tokyo. In Novosibirsk, I have two MBTs, two mechs, and a SAM. And then right now in Uzbek, I have my air superiority fighter. I have a SAM. I have a fighter. And I have two attack bombers. This is Captain G over and out.